Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Investor News. Today is an update on First Phosphate, which trades as PHOS on the CSC. With us is the CEO, John Pasolacqua. Hi, John. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Good. Now, I haven't talked to you since uh, PDAC in early March, and you've been a busy, busy guy since then. What's happened? Since PDAC, wow. Okay, so I think uh, you know we just started to receive some drill results at our Beijing La Marche property, where we have a twenty-five thousand uh, meter drill program underway, which is almost complete. We're just waiting for assays back. We've released uh, three sets of results uh, on the property. The, the the phosphate grades are are very high. Um, they're at the same level as you would find in uh, the operating mines of igneous rock. The only three that are really operating fully uh, for um, the, you know the production of uh, LFP, uh, sorry for uh, the production of uh, purified phosphoric acid in in Russia and Finland, where the grades in Russia are around ten percent. We've been finining phosphate, uh, you know, over 10, 12 percent. Uh, we've so been good finding drill it, result. Uh, We're happy with the assay results, right? Very happy. We're finding it on surface. We're finding it all within the 250 meters, which makes for a, you know a great open pit uh, operation. We're finding the ex- exceptionally high uh, yields uh, uh, and uh, and uh, grades in one region. So we we know that that would be the place to start the open pit. Right, and there's no pit 43 one and one or FS yet. It's still conceptual open pit, right? Yeah. So I mean, the uh, 43 101 and um, and uh, PEA will be uh, done. We hope by third to fourth quarter of this year. As soon as the drill results are done, we're moving right into a, a PEA that's already scheduled. And yeah, that would give us some idea of, you know, where an open pit could go at some point. Okay. So what else has happened since PDAC? Um, another really great thing is uh, we just uh, recently announced our uh, partnership with uh, the local Indigenous group uh, from uh, the community of Mastoyash. Um, Very important. In the Saguenay Lake. Yeah, very important on on many levels. Um, uh, first level is uh, they're great. Uh, they're very business oriented. Um, they're very uh, protective and uh, very sharing of what they call their Nipasinan, which is the, their homeland territory. Um, and they see our project as being very valuable for the decarbonization um, of of the world, um, and also for some of their pursuits, uh, which you know they're they're getting very deep into the energy sector because. Uh, uh, most of the land there on the new territories where um, the Quebec government is going to have to work for uh, new electrical uh, facilities, uh, hydro dams, et cetera, et cetera. So, right. um, I mean, them being close to a, a, a battery storage um, uh, project like ours uh, on LFP batteries is very important um, because once you um, make electricity um, in hydro and in wind, which they're also very big in wind, somewhere, right? you got you got to store it somewhere, right? Okay, so what else? batteries is, is uh, really specific for that. So it completes their whole sort of investment package and thesis. And they're looking to get into it, uh, you know, as, as as partners in the project. So uh, we're working through those uh, next steps as well. Cool. What else has happened since PDAC? You've what had else three has happened? Things, right? Drill results, First Nations, and... Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a few more things on the way, but maybe you can remind me, Peter, because I can't keep up myself sometimes. <laughs> Well, it's been an interesting project to follow because you're not chasing the lithium mindset that many people are chasing. I just got back from a conference where lithium was on everyone's lips, and I'm, I am a little confused by that. You're into phosphate and looking at yes. an alternative technology, which provides alternative energy depths for the, the batteries. So let's talk about uh, phosphate batteries for a second. Why do you believe phosphate's the battery of choice? Uh, so, so phosphate, you know, it, it's not necessarily the battery of choice. I think every battery has a certain uh, positioning uh, for itself. Um, but lithium iron phosphate batteries are now becoming the battery of of mass adoption in terms of EVs because it brings the price point down. Like, you know, for uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, in order to receive the subsidy, I believe the price of the vehicle has to be below $55,000. Right. And that's in the United only, States, right? Not in Canada. In the, in uni- the, in the United States. And right. There's only one way to, to reach that price point, and that is through LFP battery. Um, also for stationary energy storage, where you need you know a lot of battery to store a lot of energy, um, you need to get the, the cost really low. So it, it, that's all LFP battery, almost 100. percent And um, even you know public and commercial transportation uh, vehicles, uh, that's 100 percent uh, LFP battery in China, and we believe that that trend is coming to North America as well. So we're getting you know very quickly positioned for this. Um, and you know I think you know one thing I just wanted to say to your viewers was. Um, when you look at, uh, you know, let's take, for instance, the, the, the cannabis trade, if you will. Uh, cannabis 1.0 was what? Uh, the leaf. Who could grow a cannabis This is going leaf. to be an interesting leaf. Go right? ahead. And then <laughs> cannabis 2.0 was about extraction, right? You had a couple companies like Valens, Medifarm Labs, 
and then others they were extracting so they could make you know get the oil to make the gummy bears. Well, let's think of it kind of the same way. Um, you know, uh, a battery one hundred and one was uh, was lithium, right? One point was all about lithium, lithium, lithium. Now we right. we've, we're seeing that we have a lot of lithium, and what I've seen is some companies already starting to say, you know what, we don't even want to go into lithium mining. We just want to go into lithium extraction because we think that that's where the bottleneck is. But it's not only lithium extraction; it's also phosphate extraction, right? So having the phosphate and being able to refine it. And if you look at some of our projects here over the last six months, we've been able to take phosphate from the ground, concentrate it into phosphate concentrate and make purified phosphoric acid, which is the precursor to LFP battery. And our next step is to make a little bit of LFP cathode active material using phosphate, um, uh, lithium and and iron. So, the, you know, we're, get, we're, we're very much down the road of, uh, of uh, battery metals 2.0, battery metals 3.0. Again, why? Because there's 70 years of, of industrial knowledge in terms of uh, purifying phosphate to purified phosphoric acid, which you know already existed in the Western world for for 70 years. Whereas uh, with lithium, it's all new, right? But we we are really lucky as a as an industry in phosphate that we have that that knowledge. Right, lithium. I think the concept was in the 1950s. The first workable batteries, early 70s, and it caught on fire. Uh, phosphate has been around a lot longer than that. Exactly. So um, next steps, uh, we're looking at a feasibility study of 43101, uh, probably with an open pit in mind. What else is coming? Yeah, one one thing that I forgot to mention was uh, uh, Gary Stanley, who's uh, the former director of um, the, uh, the, 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 I guess the, you could call it the Bureau of Critical Minerals in the United States. He recently uh, retired from the Department of Commerce, and uh, he's now joined our advisory board. Um, Gary is a wealth of information. Uh, he actually was, you know, the lead author uh, in uh, what was the, uh, I don't have the right name for it, but the Critical Minerals Report um, that was uh, introduced under under President Trump and has continued under President Biden and will probably continue under future presidents as well, like a real cornerstone of uh, U.S. policy towards critical minerals. So we're very glad to have uh, Gary on board uh, to help guide us sort of from the uh, the policy standpoint. Um, in terms of our, our next steps here at First Phosphate, uh, you know, we've got to get uh, through this PEA. Uh, we've already got significant uh, amount of interest in uh, iron phosphate and lithium iron phosphate cathode active material from various um, uh, potential buyers um, that would like to see us get into production as soon as possible. So we're 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 working on the the best and easiest way to you know to to get into production as soon as we can, even perhaps uh, before our mine is is open. But again, right. it's it's very cautious, and we got to we got to walk before we run. Great. Well, uh, the company's been sprinting since I started following it about a year and a half ago. So kudos to you. Uh, to my memory, you have about 75 million shares outstanding, uh, fully diluted to a little more than 100. It's nice, tight structure. Insiders hold a lot and looking forward to see what's going to happen next. Yeah, thank you, Peter. We're trying to keep it that way. We're also uh, debt free, and we think that's a really important one, um, right. not not to be uh, you know uh, lured by by the false promises of easy capital, and then you screw up your capital structure. So we're trying our best to try and keep it as honest as we can, and advance as quick as we can as well at the same time. Good. Let's do this again in a month or so. First phosphate trading as PHOS on the CSE. This is Investor News. I'm Peter Clausy. Thank you for your time. Thanks, John. Thank you, Peter.